shall we go before the Father in prayer? Eternal Father, I give you praise. I give you glory and honor. Thank you for another time, another opportunity, another chance, another moment. Father, it's grace and nothing else. So bless your people today. Father, minister to everyone that is listening. Heal the brokenhearted. Break every shackle and every chain that binds your people. Lord, I lose them right now from every situation of calamity and disaster. I give you praise and honor. Lord, the entrance of your word gives light. Cause your word to have a place in our hearts. Let your word bring joy, bring healing, bring deliverance, bring breakthrough. Even today, I give you all the praise and all the honor for Jesus is Lord. Even now and forevermore. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. This is Pastor Richard Sasu. I'm coming your way again with our study in the book of 2 Peter chapter number 2. Today we're going to be reading from the verse number 4 following. That's where we, we sort of ended. Amen. In the verse number 4 and the verse number 5. I will backtrack a little bit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now before we get into 2 Peter chapter number 2. Let's look at something from Jude. Amen. Jude parallels what Peter is trying to say in 2 Peter chapter number 2. I don't know if Jude copied from Peter, but it looks like they all have the same kind of a kind of line, kind of trend here. And these things are very important to us, especially as the end time church of Jesus Christ. I believe that they are things that we have overlooked and we have had party as usual, thinking that our salvation can be played with. Some of us have been disobedient for a long time. Amen. It is my prayer that as this word come today, amen, as it comes to us today, we will look at things differently and begin to, to seek God more fervently in Jesus. Jesus, mighty name. Praise God for it's a dreadful thing to stand before the Lord. Hallelujah. So let us get ready. Paul says that our works are going to be tested. Amen. That is scary enough that every motive behind everything we, we did is going to be exposed and it's going to be tested by fire. Whatever comes out is what I receive. If my works are burned, then I will come out smelling like smoke, like barbecue. I don't want to be smelling like barbecue in the kingdom of God. One day, praise God, I want to smell good. I want to have my crown on. Praise the Lord. Therefore, let us do the simple things God has called us to do. Let us obey God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if it's hard, ask him for grace. If there's any struggle in your life, ask him for grace. He's able to do it. He's able to do it. He's able to do it. He is more than able. Glory to God. Let's get into the word of the Lord. I'm going to be reading from Jude. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jude chapter number five. Now let's listen to the language here. Amen. It's similar to what Peter says in Second Peter chapter one. Amen. In some part of chapter two, the word remembrance is what we have to note here. The word remembrance. Now remember that these folks did not play with words. Second Peter chapter two was written by Peter. Amen. When God also revealed to him that he was about to, to die, he was going, he was going to leave the earth very soon. Amen. So it's a sense of there's a sense of urgency in these epistles when we read them. Praise God. And so let's look at it right now. Jude says in Jude chapter chapter one, verse five. Amen. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this. Though you once knew this, every one of us that is born again, Bible believing, tongue speaking, demon chasing, amen, whatever it is, praise God. We know about the fact that though God delivered a people from Egypt, he ended up, he ended up wiping all of them out. Those from 20 years and above, all of them died in the wilderness. So Jude says here, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Amen. The work that God did in Egypt, as far as the Israelites were concerned, amen, it was a work that none of us have ever known in the history of the world before. We only read it in the Bible. So this is a work that should automatically generate faith in a people. When we see the handiwork of God, the miracles of God, the power of God in demonstration, 
Amen. It's supposed to generate faith in our heart, not just believing God for things, but also allowing the faith to propel us to overcome every challenge, to overcome sin, to overcome every struggle we may be having. See, majority of the time, what happens is believers are faith for things. Name it, claim it. I declare, I name it, I claim it, I take it. But we are forgotten that faith is twofold. Believing God for things and also using the faith that is inside of you to serve the Lord through holiness, through purity, through endurance. Amen. So the faith that causes you to believe God for things it must be the same faith that causes you to walk circumspectively with God and to love God. So here we see a generation the one thing that we have to remember as human beings, and that's one weakness that we have, the majority of the time is an act of the will. We choose to do this. Is that we have a short memory for good things. And so some of us have done good for people, but they will hardly remember two years from now and cast you out so bad. Amen. That you will come to your senses and ask yourself, am I being cast out by this fellow that I brought out of the bad situation? We have a short memory. That is the reason why Jude says here, I will therefore put you in remembrance. We have to be reminded over and over again, especially in these end times, we have to be dealing with the epistles that talks about the end times or talks about the conduct that we must have talks about the things that are going to be happening in these end times. We need to remind ourselves over and over again. Why? Because when the Bible says things, it is going to happen. We cannot change it. We cannot say God shifted away. No, the Lord has said what is going to happen in the end times. So perilous times will come because man will be Amen. Man will be. Men are going to get worse and get evil, much more evil. The world is getting much more evil and evil. Even though they were talking about peace here, peace there. No, the peace is according to them. The peace is get rid of the God factor. Take out Jesus Christ and let us all come to the table and bring everything together so that we can live peacefully. No, if you embrace the gospel, you will have peace. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So Jude says here, I will put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt. Now, Egypt is a type of the world. Amen. And Jude says here, the people. Jude could have done better by saving my people or saving, saving the people of Israel. No, it's a God saving the people out of the land of of Egypt. Now Egypt is a type of the world. Pharaoh is a type of Satan. And the Israelites is a type of the church. Amen. Praise God. The church aid was not then, but they were walking in what? Types and shadows. So God saved the people out of the land of Egypt. But then he ended up destroying the same people that he has saved, especially those that were 20 years and above, people that were supposed to know better, people that witnessed the handiwork of God firsthand. Praise God. And today we love miracles, we love signs and wonders. They are good. But signs and wonders and miracles are more for the unbelievers to bring them to salvation, to propel them to faith in Christ. If we are believers, we have moved out of that the first class state. Signs and wonders must follow us. We don't follow signs, want signs and wonders. We don't truth to a church because they were signs and wonders. No, signs and wonders must follow everyone that believes in Christ. Every child of God must be able to move in miracle signs and wonders. It is a thing for every believer. It is not something that we seek after or we follow. Praise God. 
that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. Now we have the account in Numbers chapter 13, but we'll go there soon, sooner. Praise God. Amen. When they were at Kadesh Barnea, Kadesh Barnea, two years within their wilderness wandering, they were, they were about to enter the land. But continuously, they demonstrated attitudes of unbelief. And God ended up wasting all of them. So in Numbers chapter 22, they were in the plains of Moab. They have arrived in that place. Just the Jordan was just away, a few meters away from them to cross into the promised land. And that was 38 years after they missed the first pass. But God had to make sure that that generation that he promised that he was going to wipe out, that they were all wiped out. Even in the plains of Moab, almost about 22,000 or more of them lost their lives. So if God saved them and ended up destroying them, and if we are saved, and if we don't continue in faith, walking in faith with the Lord, not just believing him for things, but also trusting him and believing him to even work his work within us. Then we don't have any excuse because these, these things have been written for our admonition. How he saved them and afterward destroyed them. Amen. Verse number six of Jude. Man, we are in 2 Peter, but we're reading Jude as a reference scripture. Amen. And the angels would kept not their first estate. This has become another, another point of controversy among the churches. Among our churches, some claim that angels can't do that. Because Jesus said that the angels in heaven don't marry. Angels don't marry in heaven. In heaven, we don't procreate. Amen. Heaven, things are fixed. <laughs> Praise God. Things are there. They exist. There's no need for procreation in heaven. But in the realm of the earth, there's the, there's, there's the ability given in the realm of the earth to procreate. In the realm of the visible or the physical. Things reproduce. Things procreate. That is how the earth is sustained. Praise God. So these angels, Jude says here, they did not keep their first estate. Now we're going to go into the Old Testament again and look at some things there. But left their own habitation. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Now let's see what Peter says here. Now we talked about it the last time, but I'm going to look at it again because today we're going to veer off into the Old Testament a little bit and look at some few things there. Now Peter says here, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So this is quite similar to what you are saying here. This group of angels are different from the angels that fell with Satan. Unlike Satan and his angels, this group of angels are bound in Tartarus. The word hell, as used by Peter, 2 Peter chapter 4, the word hell there is Tartarus. That's the very first time that word was used. Amen? Tartarus is the abyss of hell. It is far beneath hell. And they are kept there in chains of darkness and the torment, waiting for their punishment to come. And when we go to the book of Genesis, we will understand how wicked these angels and the things that they did um, is concerned. What things they did. The reason why they are unchanged. Satan and his demons are not in hell. Though hell was prepared for them. Spiritually, Satan has already been judged. John chapter 12 verse 31. John chapter 16 verse 11. Satan has already been judged, but he, he is yet to do what? To meet his final demise. 
Satan is yet to meet his final demise. It is coming. Right now, he has a lot of time to be, run, to, be, to be running around and wiggling his tail, that old dragon, and causing havoc. Satan is, is, is in himself deceived. He thinks that he can win the war. He can fight against God and win. So somehow within himself, he sees his own fool. He's deceiving himself the things that he can win, and God has given him that chance. That's the reason why. But he's yet to meet his final demise. Though he has been demoted, he has lost his place, lost his position, and he has been demoted. But that day is coming where he will be bound and he will be tortured and tormented forever and ever together with his cohorts, his demons. Now, there are similarities between false heretic teachers and the angels that vacated the original estate. Similarities between them. They are both covetous. That's the first thing. False heretic teachers, the Bible says, through covetousness, they will make merchandise of you. These group of angels that vacated, that left their first estate, were covetous. They were covetous of the fact that they could not marry and there were beautiful women on earth roaming about and men had their wives. They were covetous of women, they were covetous of sex, they were covetous of procreation. So having been created as angels, and then they sit down, and then they watch the earth and observe, so, mm, this woman are beautiful, we need to get down there and get ourselves busy. But they knew there were consequences to their action. There were consequences to their action. Amen. Now the second thing that we have to know, second similarity between false teachers and these group of angels that vacated the original estate is that they deny the truth and disregard the consequences of their actions. False teachers deny the truth even though they know that they are false. They know their intentions that they are in to destroy the church. They are in to infiltrate the church and bring the church back under bondage. They know their intentions, but they disregard the truth. Amen? Praise God. So were these angels. They disregarded the truth. They knew that they could not violate that order of God, but yet they were not scared. They were lured. Through covetousness, they wanted to become men and also have sex and also have children and also have wives. And the wives, they wanted several women. And so they did not care whether people were married, they would take their wives away from them. But these were powerful beings. Though they appeared as men, they were supernatural beings. They had extraordinary strength beyond, beyond, the, beyond the ordinary, beyond the normal. So they will take your girlfriend away, take your wife away, whatever, your sister, whatever. They choose, the Bible says, women of all that they chose and they what? They impregnated and had babies by them. That is the second similarity. They deny the truth and disregard the consequences of their actions. Number three, they willfully choose the way of corruption. In other words, whatever decisions they make is an act of the will. False teachers operate as false teachers, not, 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 not in, in ignorance, but they know exactly what they are doing and what consequences it, it, it has, praise God, and what impact it will make when the church embraces such teachings and such doctrines. They have a mission to bring the church under bondage. When the church leaves the place of grace and leaves the place of the freedom that the church has in Christ, they come under bondage and all kinds of things begin to happen. Praise God, because Christ has died once for all. So the third thing is that they willfully choose the way of corruption. The fourth thing is that they are sensual. They are sensual and introduce sensuality or licentiousness in the sphere of influence. That is what false teachers do. Amen. They introduce licentiousness. That's what Peter said in 2 Peter chapter number 2. And the same thing with these group of angels that sin. When they came on earth, they introduced so much evil on earth. Their seed, the children that they produced, were extremely wicked. 
at the same time extreme, extremely intelligent and at the same time they were what they were superpowers let me put let me put let me use that word they were extremely strong extremely wicked they were extremely sensual these fallen angels, these angels that fell, these angels that rebelled, they were also sensual, promiscuous, and they promoted harlotry, sexual immorality, perversion on earth through their offspring, and also the things that they indulged in corrupted the earth with immorality. Doesn't mean that sin was not there, no, but they made sin increase and multiply sin. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now let's go to the book of 2 Peter. I'm going to be reading the chapter number 5. Sorry, hallelujah. Chapter number 2, the verse number 5. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah and the so saved Noah, the A person. A preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Second Peter chapter 2, the verse number 5. It says, And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So God did not spare the old world. He did not spare the old world. Hallelujah. The old world spanned from Adam to Noah before the flood. The old world spanned from Adam to Noah before the flood. Genesis chapter number one to Genesis chapter number six encompasses the old world. Praise God. That's possibly about 1,500 or more years of world history. The current or present world covers post-flood. In other words, after the flood. It covers post-flood till the end of time. The current or present world covers post-flood till the end of time. And that can be seen from Genesis chapter 8 all the way to Revelations chapter number 20 amen even though some books in the bible talks about futuristic things i'm just trying to put a little timeline over here amen when you read the prophets and so on some of them will talk about things that is beyond amen this world that will happen in the future world that is about to come that god will introduce in i'm not talking about the new world order amen that is still the part of the same the same old world current world system that we're living in amen so we have the old world spanning from Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 6. That is before the flood. And then we have the current or present world spanning from Genesis chapter 8 all the way to Revelations chapter number 20. And then we have the new world, the new heaven and the new earth that God is about to make. Praise God. We're about to create after everything has ended. Time is no more. Every judgment has come. Amen. We're going to see that. In what? In Revelations 21 and Revelations chapter 22 from the verse number 1 to the verse number 6. Praise God. So Peter says in 2 Peter chapter number 5, it says, And God spared not the old world. He spared not the old world. But what? He saved Noah, the eighth person. The word eighth person doesn't mean anything else but the fact that Noah was part of seven others. Amen. Noah, his wife, and what? His three children and their wives. But the Bible said here Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Amen. And God used flood to destroy the world that was there. Now let's get into Genesis chapter 6 and then we're going to look at few things in Genesis chapter number six I'm going to read from the verse number one and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth now let's look at the language here where the bible puts things it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth 
and daughters were born unto them. So the Bible says man began to multiply. He did not categorize man under any specific umbrella. He says generally man began to multiply and daughters were born to the man. Amen. The term man here will also have to do with the woman as well because men don't, don't just produce children. You need a woman to have babies, amen. So you need to be married. Let me put it right. Some of us, if you're having babies without getting married, amen. Play, please make sure you marry and find a woman you love, a woman who loves you, and settle down and marry and produce babies. Amen. You don't want to be producing all these babies with our fathers in their lives. So not being there in the lives of your children. That is not the ideal of God. Amen. That has consequences. Praise the Lord. Some of us might have come from backgrounds like that but forgive your fathers and become a good father yourself amen to your children glory to god the daughters were born unto them the verse number two genesis chapter six that the sons of god the sons of god saw the daughters of man now the bible says that as men began to multiply, daughters were born to the men. The word men here encompasses the women or the wives as well, because both of them came together to produce these children. So as the population of the world was growing, more beautiful girls were being born out of the marriages that existed on earth. And these sons of God, as Judas made us to know, they vacated the original estate. Amen. Certain scholars believe otherwise. Now we're going to go into that. Amen. Praise the Lord to, to challenge their, their, their point. Praise the Lord. Their theory. We're going to challenge that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now let's look at some things here. The angels that sinned, that vacated the original estate. According to 2 Peter chapter 2, the verse number 4, and Jude chapter number 6 are the key players of the events contributing to the destruction of that ancient or the old world. This group of angels contributed immensely. They are the main reasons why the Lord destroyed the old ancient world. That is from creation to the days of Noah before the flood. So let us focus on this. See how wicked the world was. If God had to come to that place to destroy all flesh and save only eight people, then something was happening in that day that we have to, we have, we have to be aware of. And Jesus has warned us that just as it was in the days of Noah, so shall our day be. But we'll get into that. Amen. So we have to look at things carefully where the world is going today. Some of us think that some of these things are bizarre. But we're going to see whether angels can have babies or not. We're going to look at certain examples in the Bible. Not that they had babies, but certain things that happened as far as angels are concerned. Then we can jump into our own conclusion whether we believe that these sons of God are different people. They were mere men or otherwise. All right. Now the sons of God came into the daughters of men, according to Genesis chapter 6. Now who are the sons of God? The term sons of God refer to angelic beings. Even though there are few occasions where that word is used of righteous generation in the Old Testament. However, majority of the time, majority of the time it is used of angelic beings sons of god refer, refer to angelic beings and not the descendants of seth as some scholars have adduced amen some scholars have adduced that the term sons of god are the descendants of seth now who is seth seth was the replacement of Abel. Amen. After Cain killed Abel, Adam and Eve conceived. There was a time, a time gap 
between the time Abel was killed and the time Seth was given by God to Adam and Eve. But Seth was specifically a replacement for Abel. So then, since a righteous generation was traced from Seth, amen, some scholars believe that the sons of God here refers to the descendants of Seth. But there's a problem with that, with that viewpoint. Amen. There's a problem with that theory. Praise God. No matter how they want to bend things. The term sons, or son of God, applies to entities that are direct creation of God. Entities that are direct creation of God. So when we say son of God, it means that man does not have any input as far as your birth in relation to God is concerned. Now, Joe chapter 1, verse number 6, Joe chapter 2, the verse number 1, Joe chapter 38, the verse number 7, Daniel 3, 25, Daniel talks about the mingling of the seed. If we have time, we will look at that. Amen. Job chapter 1, verse 6. Job chapter 2, verse number 1. Job chapter 38, the verse number 7. Daniel 3, 25. The book of Psalms, chapter 29, verse 11. The book of Psalms, chapter 89, the verse 7. Though the term Son of God was applied to Adam, in Luke 3 38 that term was applied to Adam it must be noted that Adam was directly created by God Adam was not born by a woman praise the Lord so some scholars have made that claim that the descendants of Seth were righteous and not corrupted like the descendants of Cain Hence, the term Son of God applies to the righteous descendants of Seth. This assertion can be challenged in the following. We're trying to challenge their, their viewpoint, amen, to see whether angels really came down here on earth and cohabited with women, if it can be done, if it's possible. Amen, Jesus said. When those people came to Christ to tempt him, that if a man died and left his wife, and the brother married the wife, and the brother died, another brother married, amen, and the man, the woman ends up marrying seven men in the resurrection, amen, whose wife is it going to be? I don't know what about seven men, what I, I can't get into that scripture. And Jesus told them that in heaven, we neither marry or are given in marriage, we are like the angels. He's talk, he talked about heaven. He didn't talk about the earth. And these angels, they violated the order of God. They left their original estate. Can angels appear as men? The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 13, amen, that let us, let us not hesitate in entertaining what? Strangers. Some have ended up entertaining angels without knowing. So which means that it's not everyone that you see walking down the street that is a real human being. Amen. So it means that if angels of God can appear as men, the fallen angels can also appear as men. Amen. Not for procreation, amen. But they can disguise and sometimes appear as human beings. Praise the Lord. So the question as to whether angels can appear as men, it's not a problem. There's an answer to it. Yes, they can transform and become like men and walk among us without us knowing. And some people have encountered angels like that. Stuck on the road in trouble somewhere, no man's land, and somebody appears, helps them, and they look around and the person is vanished. Amen. But the person appeared as a real human being, had an encounter with you, talked to you, helped you. Praise God. So that is not a problem. Angels can appear as men. So what the Bible is saying in, in Genesis chapter 6, it's, it's not the descendants of Seth for these reasons. Seth 
was born with the sinful nature. Just like every ordinary man, apart from Christ, every ordinary man apart from Christ was born with the sinful nature. So Seth was one of them because Seth was a son of Adam. Amen. He was a descendant of Adam. Now, though Seth was righteous, his righteousness was not directly carried by his descendants. In other words, the fact that you were a man of God, you were a pastor, a bishop, apostle, doesn't mean that you give birth to righteous children. You have to raise the children well, teach them about God, lead them to God, and the children will have to make a decision to follow God. Now, there's a high probability that righteous people will raise children to fear God. It is there. But then it's not automatic. It is not carried. It's not hereditary. Righteousness is not hereditary. I don't carry righteousness and give it to my children. They will have to obey God for themselves. Come to the place of accountability and make a decision to serve God. Therefore, Seth, though he was righteous, amen, the Bible doesn't talk, talk much about his righteousness, but since he was the replacement of Abel, then we, we want to assume that he was righteous. I'm also looking at the fact that a righteous generation was traced, and the generation of the Messiah was traced out of his lineage. But that doesn't annul the fact that even out of Seth's lineage also came some wicked people. Amen? Some very wicked people also came out of that lineage. Praise the Lord. So we can challenge that, that assertion of these scholars that believe that the sons of God meant men, descendants of Seth. Oh, right. Though Seth was righteous, I'll repeat, his righteousness was not directly carried by his descendants. The righteousness of Seth was based on his personal decision to walk with God by faith. Just like Seth, Every man or woman born under the genealogy of Cain had the chance to walk with God by faith. In other words, the Cainites and the Setites, the only thing that will set them apart, that is the descendants of Cain in the Bible and the descendants of Seth in the Bible, the only thing that will set them apart is their faith walk. And what? And God. That is the only way they could be righteous, having faith in God and walking with God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Righteousness was not an automatic privilege reserved for only Seth and his descendants. The Canaanites or the descendants of Cain had the chance to also walk with God by faith. So to say that the descendants of Cain were the wicked generation of Cain produced a wicked generation and Seth produced a righteous generation. No, descendants of Cain, some of them were righteous though, that is if they decided to walk with God. Though the Bible traced the lineage of the righteous, of Abraham, of the Messiah, the kings of, 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 of Israel from, the, from Seth's lineage. However, Seth also had wicked people in his lineage. Cain had wicked people as well as righteous people in his lineage. And we have to understand the old world from Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 6 will end up in a flood. So Noah is going to begin what we see in the world today. To every one of us living in the world today, black, white, red, we came from Noah. Though we came from Noah through Adam, amen. But God ended that world and now Noah has become a progenitor. He's the progenitor of Indians, of Chinese, of Vietnamese, a man of African, Nigeria, Sudan, Egypt, France, the United Kingdom, everywhere. Noah is our progenitor. So when we look at this generation, then we have to look at the three sons of Noah. But even then, righteousness was not automatic. Everyone will have to walk with God by faith so that it can be by grace, according to Romans chapter 4. All right. The fourth thing that we have to note, that is what refuting or challenging this assertion by scholars that the sons of God here refers to the descendants of Seth is that the Sethites or the descendants of Seth were not ordained by God to produce all the ugly, less beautiful women, unlike the Canaanites. 
Because it says, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and took for themselves wife of all they chose. So for us to say that the sons of God means the descendants of Seth. Or the men, the righteous men that were born under Seth's lineage during that time, during that, that generation, saw the daughters of men being the daughters of the Canaanite generation. It's wrong in the sense that Seth also had beautiful women produced from his, from his lineage. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 6, the verse number 1, that as men began to multiply, did not say as Cain's descendants began to multiply, that beautiful women were born to them. So as men began to multiply, so men here stands for Seth's generation and Cain's generation, descendants of Seth, descendants of Cain, and both of them had daughters being born to them. Amen. So the Sethites were not ordained by God to produce all what? The ugly, less beautiful women, unlike the Canaanites. No, it doesn't make sense that all the girls that were born under sex generation were ugly. For which reason, the descendants of Cain, so the descendants of Seth, decided not to marry from their own, but went to the descendants of Cain and said, oh, you guys got a beautiful woman, so let me marry them. It doesn't make sense. All right, now let's go. Though Seth was righteous, he was not a direct creation of God. Like I said, the term son of God or the sons of God is a term that is applied majority of the time to the direct creation of God. Someone who's birthed by God without a human involvement. Amen. This can be further explained. All believers in Christ, born again, are direct creation of God. We are a direct creation of God. Why? Because the new birth experience is made possible by the Holy Spirit. John chapter 3, the verse number 3 to the verse number 7. Nicodemus had to understand this the hard way. And Jesus said, Amen. Are you the teacher of the Jews? Are you the one that teach them the law? And yet you don't understand the simple thing that a man needs to be born again. Why? Because you have been born by the seed of Adam. The sinful nature is in man. For man to experience eternal life, he needs a, a second birth. Amen. So we as believers, born again believers, our new birth experience has nothing to do with our earthly parents. It has everything to do with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus Christ. So when we believe in Christ, the new man is regenerated. Amen. That's why we call it born again. So for us, we have been born the second time. Praise the Lord. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. So that is the reason why the term Son of God applies to the direct creation of God. So the term Sons of God, amen, in the book of Jude, it talks about the angels. He used the word angels. I believe God knew that there's going to be a point of controversy, that some scholars will veer away from the path. But we have known and we have seen that breeding, the breeding of hybrids, is, is not a new thing. And in these end times, that is what we're going to experience, the breeding of the hybrids. Amen. The hybrids, they're already there. They already exist. Some of them have been moved even from experimental stages into real life experience. And we're going to see that in the new world, in the next world that we are entering into in the face of this current world, we're going to see the hybrids. Amen. Every racism that we have experienced. In the last 400 years, the spirit of racism that has totally surrounded the world, amen, it's a dress, it's a dress, what? a dress rehearsal, it's a dress rehearsal for what is about to come. The devil always believes in race superiority. So what we're going to read in the book of Genesis is about race. Amen. This high bricks that were created through the interbreeding of angelic beings who became men, were a superior race. They were highly intelligent. They were highly strong. They were huge. 
Amen. Their stature, their physique was extraordinary. They were high, big in stature, and they were strong. So what happened? There was bullying on earth. There was racism on earth. There was rape on earth. There was destruction on earth. So many things went on, for which reason God had to destroy that generation. Amen. So let's get into the word of God. Let me finish with my, my final challenge of that satite belief that some scholars carry that these sons of God will have to do with the descendants of Seth. The Bible uses the term daughters of men as a general term for the women that were born during that generation and did not specify as to whether they were daughters of Cain or otherwise. Moreover, the Bible did not use the term daughters of men to depict a sinful race of women born under Cain. Since daughters born under Seth are also implied in this passage of scripture. So these are my points. These are the things that refute the theory of some of these Bible scholars who claim that the sons of God in Genesis chapter 6 doesn't have to do with angels, but it will have to do with the descendants of Seth. The problem is that they couldn't just wrap their mind around the fact that angels came down here on earth and cohabited with women. But today, science is proving us wrong. The breeding programs have been going on for possibly the past 50 or 60 years or more. Amen. The hybrids are in training. Some of them have been released, even in them some parts of the Middle East. Amen. This news this is something that you can research and find. They were part of a, a group of people in the Middle East causing mayhem. They were genetically modified human beings. Genetically modified human beings. And they were doing all kinds of things. They were extremely wicked. But they were also eating human heart and drinking blood. And we have not seen anything yet. That is where the world is going. So all the racism that has been experienced is going to take a hype. Let us not think that racism is coming to an end. Racism is from Satan. Satan wants to produce a superior breed so that we become the slaves that will serve these hybrids that are combination of technology, combination of genetics, and all kinds of things. And these things are things that are there. Amen. Even in the Second World War, the Germans had all kinds of things that was going on, trying to produce a superior race. Hitler had these programs. So this is not something that we should be challenging. The problem is that in these our day, people want to close their ears. They don't want to hear these things. But when Jesus spoke parables, he told folks, let those that have ears hear what the Lord is saying. And if he said that what happened in the days of Noah will be repeated in our time, we have to take note of these things. They are going to happen. Praise God. They are going to happen. Don't want, don't, let us not even focus the racism. We haven't seen racism yet. Praise God. So let's go back to the book of Genesis chapter number 6. And see what the Bible says. So that the sons of God, 6 verse 2, I'll read that again. Amen. So that the daughters of men were fair, they were beautiful, and they took them wives of all which they chose. They made selection at will. They didn't care whether they took your wife or not, took your, took your baby sister or your sister. Once they looked beautiful and they looked like candidates, they took them. Let me, let me di digress a little bit by saying, according to certain experts, some of these breeding programs that have been done in modern times, when I say breeding programs, I mean the production of hybrids. Some of these babies, and majority of the time, the babies, the gestational period is about four months. It's believed that they grow faster, extraordinarily faster than regular human beings. That is the reason why giving birth to those babies were possible Amen. So it was possible during the days of Noah. Because if you're looking at these 
giants. How can these women carry these babies? Their gestational period was different. Amen. It was not nine months, possibly three or four months, the babies were delivered. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is not bizarre. This is reality. It happened in the world, and Jesus said it will happen again in the last days. The Bible has warned us that unless the days be shortened, even scarcely will the righteous be saved. But because of the righteous, the days are going to be shortened. So things are going to happen. Things are about to blow our minds here on this earth. That is the reason why we shouldn't be looking at our salvation the same old way we've been looking at it. This is the time to make amends because what is about to be released into the world, we have no idea. And before they do that, what are they going to use? They're going to use fear. Wars and rumors of wars, Jesus said. That's the beginning of sorrows. But things are going to happen to put us on the defense because they know that fear works. And anytime you use fear and intimidation, you can get people. That is a reason why you have to know Christ. I will have to know Christ just beyond profession. The days of going to church and just singing and not knowing the Lord is over. This is a time for everyone to take their Christian life seriously. It is not a time to joke around. It is not a time to party as usual. Party is over. Let us get ready for what is about to come. This is not a false or negative confession. The Bible is spoken about it. And they are experts that have done investigations. And it will blow your mind what is lurking in the atmosphere. Let us get ready for what is about to come into the world. Amen. So this is a, this Nephilim, these angels that came down here, superpowers. They had extraordinary strength. They appeared as mere men. Amen. But you couldn't mess with them. You couldn't mess. They would yank your head off. You couldn't mess with them. Amen. And you couldn't kill them with ordinary bullets. Yet they possess a body, but the healing, the healing capacity, the healing function was different. So if they chose women of all that they wanted, that means there was some war that they had to fight. Because the men were not going to allow their, their women to go like that. So which means that they had to overpower the men, overpower the married men, overpower the brothers who had sisters, and take these wives, take these women, and go have children by them. The verse number three. Genesis chapter 6. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. So what Jude said here, Jude chapter 1, the verse number 6, And the angels who kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. What Peter said here, for God spared not the angels that sinned, 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 4, but cast them down to hell. It's what we are seeing here in Genesis chapter 6, the verse number 3. Wickedness was multiplied. Immorality became the order of the day. Things that will blow your mind. Amen. Things that will blow your mind happen on earth. Praise God. My spirit shall not always strive with man. For, for that he also or he also is flesh. Now why would God say that he also is flesh? So who else is flesh? The animals? <laughs> amen. The animals, amen. They, they are flesh. Praise God. God is saying something different here. <laughs> He's saying that these hybrids that were produced, they are also flesh like man. Like man. Amen. And we're going to look at the language that the Bible uses for Noah. Praise God in Genesis chapter 6. So let's read on. <laughs> Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. So here the days was reduced. Amen. But Noah was an exception. He's going to live long. Praise God. All right. If the days were not reduced, were not lessened, you're looking at wickedness, the perpetuity of wickedness. If some of these hybrids were supposed to live for long, 
300, 400, 500, 600, 800 years. And their, their, their offspring is also living for long. Let us think about the, the wickedness that will be in this world. Amen. The wickedness that will be in this world. And a lot of the things that have been done to, to cause these same sex issues. It is a preparation for these breeds that are coming because a lot of them are like that. A lot of them are like that because these breeds are not the creation of God. It's an infusion of human and some other DNAs and they don't have human, full human instincts. The animal is big because they are a mix seed for which reason demons will possess them not only that naturally they will exhibit some behavior and some character and so everything that is going on in this world is preparing us for these these breeds that are going to come that is how they're going to live their lives and they're going to be strong they're going to have extraordinary energy amen a lot of them are being used being tried in the arena of super soldiers. This is not a movie thing. This is reality. Praise God. This is reality. This is the word of God. It happened during the days of Noah. All right, let's go on. So if their days were not reduced, according to Genesis 6 verse 3, wickedness will perpetuate. It will continue for several years and the earth will not be able to contain these things. According to the book of Enoch, it's not a book I'll tell you to go read. However, a lot of the things in that book is legit, some are oral traditions, but there's more than one version of that book. Amen. Praise the Lord. He talks a lot about these things. That not only the human race, not only the DNA of human beings were corrupted during that time, also animals were corrupted. There was an intermingling of the seed of animals with human seed and back and forth. Amen. So all kinds of creatures roamed the earth. And when you look at the Greek mythology, you're going to see some of these things in there. I'm not saying go read them. However, these things, <laughs> amen, in some stories and some history of some ancient people, these things existed. Amen. Praise the Lord. So there was so much wickedness. And if God had to go to the extent of wiping the earth, but before he did that, he had to select animals, the breed of animals, pure breed. God himself did the selection how to bring them on the ark to preserve the very flesh that he created. That is the reason why when we go to Genesis chapter 1, God says what? Everything must reproduce after its own kind. That's the reason why God said so. Today, we we'll see how we are genetically modified. We have modified even seed. That even the seed, some of the seeds that are planted are not just mere seed. They are pesticides, weedicides, fungicides, amen, insecticides, all in one seed. So when I'm planting corn, I'm planting not just a seed, I'm planting a weedicide, a fungicide, a pesticide. Man has been able to genetically change the chemical order of even seed. If we would do that to seed, what wouldn't be done to the human seed? Amen. 